All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I want to start off by saying thanks uh, for all the encouragement and support that I've been receiving on Instagram and YouTube and um, Facebook and Reddit. It's really, um, I really appreciate it. You know, I'm, I'm not a professional artist and I'm, I'm learning just like a lot of you out there. And, um, you know, one day I hope to enter into that professional world and maybe do some illustration gigs or, you know, who knows what possibilities uh, can be opened up if I improve my skill. So uh, you guys are contributing to that uh, enthusiasm and energy that I'm trying to use to fuel my progress um, as an artist. I really appreciate it. You guys, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm so glad I decided to, you know, get the courage to put myself out there and get out there into the uh, digital ether, uh, as it were. Um, so yeah, let's get into this tutorial. Um, this is my little bluebird. Uh, I created him and for uh, one of my Vectober challenges, and uh, it made a, made a tiny little splash. And uh, I got quite a few requests to do a short tutorial for this. So uh, here you are. If you want to follow along with this, um, you can go to my Gumroad page, and there'll be a tutorial file there. You can download it for free. Come back and uh, follow along with me on your iPad. I also want to mention that you don't have to work on your iPad. Uh, everything that I do in this video can be done on the desktop versions. You'll just need to, um, I'll put some notes up too uh, on the video itself uh, for keyboard shortcuts and things like that. Um, if I leave anything out, I'm sorry. I've got limited time to work on this kind of stuff. So uh, uh, just, I, I hope you can glean something uh, from this short little video. I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. I won't go through the entire process. Um, but I'll, I'll show you all the tips and tricks that I employed in the creation of this little guy. Let's get started. Let me grab my pencil here from the top. Okay, so I'll open up the layer stack and I've got my paper texture here at the top. Um, my original artwork and then below on the bottom here is a compositional grid that I that I always throw into my projects when I start. Don't really need, I didn't really need it. This is just a sort of a little character sketch, but all right. Um, let's uh, pull down this little guy and uh, take a look at what's going on under the hood. We've got three main um, layers here. We've got my sketch layer, my colors, and my inks. Now these are all vector. Um, I'm going to go, let's let's start from the beginning and I'll just tell you about what the process was like. I'll give you a process overview. I started out with this little sketch. Um, it's, 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 not, it's really rough. Um, I was going to draw, um, you know, the challenge for that day was bird. So I was going to draw this sort of little parakeet. And uh, my original concept for this little guy was that he was just going to be like, you know, kind of parakeet colored, like green head with some yellow body and some red colorations here and there. Um, but, you know, at this stage in the drawing, I was like, man, I just, I really want to start inking. Uh, I think I love, I love inking. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's one of my favorite things that I've been playing with and learning to do. Um, and it's just so satisfying. There's something very satisfying about it. And uh, so, yeah, I jumped right into the inks at this stage. And uh, by the time I got through with the inks, I was like, this guy doesn't look like a parakeet anymore. And then that's when I decided to go with the blue color scheme. Um, what we're going to do is um, I'll, I'll just take you through. Um, I'll take you through the same process just briefly, and I'll go over the, the main points of each part in the process. And that'll be the, the, the whole of this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my sketch layer, turn off my colors, and I'm actually going to select my inks layer and lower the opacity to something like 20 or 18. Let's go to 18. That, that's about right. That's fine. Nice little uh, thing that they've built into Affinity Designer. If you want to uh, just make sure you don't move anything around on accident, uh, it's good to get in the habit of pressing the little X above the magnet, which deselects the current selection. So I'll close up that layer and then 
I've selected the easel uh, paper layer to to talk about, I, I guess, once uh, we get our brush set up, um, that's where we're going to start from. What I'll do is I'll select my vector brush tool, and then over here in the brush menu, acrylics come up by default. Uh, I used my own comic inkers for this, but uh, you don't if you don't have to to, to get those. If um, you can do this using like a simple pen, we're going to use the solid pen with pressure for this exercise. I'm going to select it and select edit. Um, the default setting is 64 pixel width with a 70% size variance. The controller that controls the size variance is pressure, and I've left the default curve in place here. We'll leave that. What we'll do is we'll increase the size variance. You can tap on it, and I'll type in 98. And I'll decrease the width of the brush to something like, let's go with 27. And see what happens from there. And that looks about right. I don't like to go to the full 100. Um, with certain brushes, it doesn't work out so well if you go all the way to 100. And it might be just the way that I draw. Um, it, you, you've got to imagine that what's happening is the computer is recording the pressure that you're applying with the pencil. And it's applying that pressure curve to the stroke you're drawing. But it's doing it within that, that variance. Uh, from 0 to 98 or 0 to 100. I find that whenever I put it to 100, I often get these uh, anomalies in the line that I don't really like at the beginnings and the ends of the stroke. So I find that giving it, keeping it between 95 and 99 like gives me a little bit of leeway where I don't have to deal with that so much. You might not encounter that. Play with it a little bit and uh, find the setting that is appropriate for your, uh, for your physicality, for the way that you move the pencil in, uh, across the screen. Okay, I'll hit OK. I'm good to go there. I'll go in and select it again. And uh, I've got my brush tool selected here. So let's lay down some strokes and talk about some things really quickly. Um, you may want to go down and take a look before you begin uh, and actually look at your controller setting. Now, again, in the brush itself, the setting that uh, the controller for the brush is the pressure setting. So you could set this to pressure, and you would be able to draw and apply pressure to the stroke and get a result that looks something like that. Brush defaults will do the same thing because on this particular brush, the controller is set to pressure. You could also uh, change it to velocity. Velocity will give you a uniform line until you increase your speed and then it will start to apply that size variance based on the speed at which you move the uh, stylus. And then none will give you the default uniform line with the nib that is uh, the brush is uh, using. So again, I've got this rounded, capped, uniform line. Um, I drew these lines on the page like this. Let me set it back to pressure really quick. I drew these like this for a reason. I wanted to, we can call this, um, we'll call the brush settings lesson one. We'll call this one lesson two. Um, or tip two, however you want to think of it. Um, these are just four different curves. But can you imagine if I had inked this entire bird? Uh, just what would happen would be that I would have this giant layer stack with a hundred plus strokes that I would need to go back and organize. It could get really annoying and it can really kill my vibe and like my flow, my artistic flow. You know, if you want to keep going and things like that, the, the project can get untenable. You want to employ a good order of operations whenever you're doing uh, computer-based work or a vector-based work or any kind of um, work that is labor-intensive. You're going to want to em employ an order of operations in order to keep things nice and neat. Uh, it doesn't have to uh, destroy your workflow. It can become part of it and organic, and it, you can use it and... Uh, you know, it's not going to pull you out of your, your, your artistic flow. 
the work the order of operations would look something like this hit the plus sign lay down a vector layer bring it where you want it in the stack and then lay down your strokes and then every stroke that you lay down subsequent to creating that layer will appear in the layer stack um, inside the layer that you created and this is a nice way to keep things super organized Ooh, I don't like that one that much let's try again there we go that's good enough for our little tutorial purpose okay so awesome I've got this nice little layer here everything's contained within it and what I'll go ahead and do to keep myself organized is I can label it tap on the ellipses in the layer menu tap on the name of the layer and this one just is oh hold on I think I've got the curve selected let's select the layer I'll tap on it again make sure you've got the layer selected not the curve select the layer tap on that it's named layer one now I'm going to hit the X and I'll call this layer head outline okay cool and hit OK quick shout out to the folks at Apple holy cow I love the new scribble feature in iPad OS. This is awesome. I hate putting down my pencil while I'm working. I don't want to type anything. I don't want to use an on-screen keyboard. I love just being able to write in the name of the layer. Wow. Apple, thank you. Sarah, thank you. Cheers. Whew. Okay. Sorry, I get pumped up. Um, all right. So we've got our neat little layer. It's labeled. We could continue inking the whole thing if we wanted to. I don't want to spend too much time on that. I'm going to show you. We'll call this one. We'll call this one lesson three. Let's edit the strokes. Once you've got your entire piece inked and you uh, you start to examine the strokes, you'll notice all kinds of imperfections. Look at what I've got here. The basic shape and the basic thickness and width and weight of the stroke is exactly what I want, but there are some weird little anomalies. Like I've got this round cap here. I've got this triangular nipple here. I've got a totally flat cap on this one. Um, I've got to go back and clean it up. I've got this weird little nipple here. Things that are unnatural and uh, not good. And of course, on this guy like right here, He's way too thick, and he's got them. I've got some strange little caps on those guys. We can edit those uh, curves and uh, change the shape of that taper by editing the pressure curve. So what I'll do is I'll deselect real quick, and I will collapse this layer menu. Let's look at the first couple of strokes that I laid down, so we can learn this. For this one, uh, the main thing that's that's a big problem here is that this last cap is super round. And look, if you see, if I was like trying to ink a penciler's work, I failed. Uh, the stroke doesn't look like that, and it goes all the way down and tapers quite nicely. And then uh, I sort of missed the overall contour. I was off a little bit. That's not a problem. The first thing I want to do is take care of this taper. So I've got this curve selected. I'm going to tap on this uh stroke icon and because it is selected the pressure curve for this particular stroke shows up in the window there um, what I want to do is I want to draw your attention to the, the end of it the last first of all the last uh, part of the curve I'm going to select the node tool really quick the last part of the curve there is sitting at roughly about 65 or 70 percent of the 98% that we have as our scale of uh, size variance. If I move this down to the end of the scale, that's a 98% change in the, in the maximum thickness of the line. So I'll get it sharp the way I want it. And then this curve is pretty wonky. I'm going to clean it up a bit. To, to move nodes around, you simply tap on them. And when they're blue, you can move them. So I'm going to try to make this curve a little more smooth and natural. Um, I don't even want to keep this little node in there. Uh, I'm actually going to delete it. To delete a node, you tap on it, and this little menu comes up, and just hit Delete Node. And then I got rid of it. And that uh, decreases some of the complications that I'll have to deal with while I'm editing this curve. If you keep 
these uh, menu items pinned like this, you can keep them open while you're drawing and editing. So you can see what's happening and you can make adjustments on the fly. So what I'll do is I have the node tool selected. I have the line selected. I'm going to start moving the nodes around to where I want them. And I'll adjust the handles accordingly. And then I'll start to examine where I need to increase the, the width and thickness of the line and, and the, uh, the depth of the uh, pressure curve. That looks pretty good right there. You see here where this node is, I need a little bit more width there. So I'm going to increase that. And I'm actually going to increase the size of that hill so it matches my original pencils. And now we're starting to look a lot better. It's a lot thicker at down here to the right of this curve. So I'll move this node over a little bit to where it matches. And you have to practice this a little bit to get good at it. But once you've got it, you've got it. And there you go. That first curve is nice and solid. I really like it. Let's do another one. I'm going to deselect by hitting my X one more time because it's actually making sure that I uh, first the node was selected and then once I deselected the node it selected the line or the curve and then I hit X again to deselect that curve. Excuse me for a moment. I'm going to take a sip of this uh, water. My throat's starting to dry out a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Sweet. So let's go into the layer stack. Let's uh, talk about this line. Similar problems. The weight looks good, but it's way off of the pencil or, or the, uh, the line that I was aiming for, and uh, the caps are awful. Let's, uh, let's do some work. First things first, I think I'm going to select the Move tool and sort of move it into place where it belongs, and I'll also rotate it a little bit. And that takes care of 90% of our problems. I will select the stroke icon. And I will take care of these pressure curves in the same way that I did before. This one needs to be... It doesn't have to be super sharp. And that's the great thing about being the penciler and the inker. I can make decisions editorially. <laughs> Um, I don't like that that original line. You see that I, I got lazy and I left a round cap on it because I was just I was just dying to continue the picture and I wanted to finish it. I only had like about an hour and a half to complete the drawing. So, uh, yeah, I was just moving through it really quickly. So that curve looks really nice. Um, I think I'm going to even out the middle here to where it looks nice and like a, like a nice crescent brush stroke. And you know what? That's good enough for me for right now. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. Now, we'll call this uh, Lesson 3B or Lesson 4. Uh, I've just edited the pressure curve for this line. And the line that I'm going to edit next is quite similar in shape and size. So what I can do is... I can select my move tool here. I will copy this curve. I'm not going to copy paste it, although I could. Um, I just want to show you some things that are possible uh, that will help you. Um, I'm going to select paste style. And all the edits and stylizations and effects or anything that I've done uh, or have applied to the previous curve, I can paste on to the next curve. Um, this is extremely useful. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, we'll, we'll, I use it quite a bit. These are all things that I use quite a bit while I'm working. Um, I hope they help you and uh, speed up your workflow. Um, we will edit this line now. And already half of the work is done. I'm going to undo what, that so we can take a look at it. Okay, I went from that to this in a second, which is excellent. Let's uh, edit the stroke. We'll move it down where it needs to be, where it's supposed to be, according to my penciler, who is me. And then this one's a little too fat. I'm going to shallow it. I'm going to make it a little shallower, the hill, a little uh, less steep. 
cool. And I kind of like that. Bringing the taper all the way down again, getting making it a little shallower. So it looks natural and nice. And there you go. Now, again, you're probably you might be noticing that these these lines have round caps on them. That's quite all right for this tutorial. If you really want to get the absolute sharpest caps that you can or, or on or taper that you can, bring it all the way up to 100 in the brush settings. There's no there's no problem with that. It's just uh I I'm not doing that for this particular tutorial just for the sake of simplicity. Okay. And already this is looking a lot better. It looks as though I, I, I inked it with a brush. So let's talk about the workflow, the, the macro. Once you lay down your inks for your entire piece, right, you can go back and do the editing. And think of it as a kind of a cool down period where you're looking at this piece more analytically rather than you are emotionally, which I tend to be drawing, you know, I, I get into the groove and I'm just sort of feeling it you know like what i'm drawing i'm, I'm emotionally and, and i'm engaging my imagination at that point i'm not engaging my critical thinking skills 100 percent. so you come back in and you can start to edit the lines and make decisions about what's happening um real inking you would you you know real inkers are the masters of commitment you know, they go in and uh, they make decisions about e each and every stroke before, during, and after they make them. And uh, that's not what you do <laughs> when you're working with uh, digital uh, tools. You, you could do that, but um, digital tools, I think the purpose of them are to increase the speed at, with, at which you can work. And uh, yeah. You can get things done a little bit more quickly and you have a lot more flexibility and uh and i think in order to make art that is uh of a, of a higher quality you have to learn how to balance that and uh i'm working on that myself um yeah so imagine that we've done our entire contour for our bird and the last thing that we want to tack on uh, is our, 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 our eyes. And that's a great way for me to segue into using the pencil tool. So I'm going to do the eyes for you really quick. I'll do one of them anyway. Let's, uh, let's have a little meet and greet with the pencil tool. I'm going to put the plus sign down, lay down a vector layer, and uh, I'll select my pencil tool. Let's just draw with it right away, just right off the bat and see what happens. Okay, the last, I don't know if you noticed this curve, but it's the same curve of the last, <laughs> it's the same pressure curve of the last curve that I was editing or that I drew. If I want to reset the pressure curve, I can tap on this and hit reset pressure curve, and there's that. But here's the thing, I don't want to draw with a stroke. So you see down here in this menu here, I can go and tap the stroke icon on the uh, pencil tool menu and I can hit no stroke. And then I want to use a fill so I can turn on the fill by tapping the use fill icon till it's highlighted blue. And then I can pick whatever color I want. And then the next stroke that I lay down or the next shape or curve that I lay down with the pencil tool will look exactly like that. Get rid of that layer. I'm going to lay, lay down a new vector layer. I want to use black for the eyes. You can actually, let's say that I wanted to use a very specific color for the shape that I'm drawing. I can go here to my swatches menu. And I want to let you know that in the tutorial file that you can download, there's an actually, there's a document palette that has all of the exact colors that I used to draw my little bird, if you want to follow along. I'm just going to use black, but I just wanted to show you that this was possible. I wanted to demonstrate it. You can go into your swatches, and you hit black. And then when I draw, 
I'll draw a black circle with no stroke. And just to make sure, this, you can also control that from here. The little hollow ring there above the uh, fill, uh, is, this is the stroke color, this is the fill color. This is set to none or null, and this is set to black. Perfect. Let's draw that eye. That's good enough for now. It's nice and tucked into my little vector layer. Now, this is a little bit difficult. I really want to see the contour of that eye. It's not the same as a stroke. A stroke is thin, and this is a little thick, and I, I, I can't see what I'm doing particularly well. I'm, I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit so I can see the contour of the original eye. And then I'll select my node tool, and I'll go in here and edit these nodes a little bit. Again, just moving them in a way that is useful or to, to help me achieve the uh, the proper contour. Here, I'm going to grab this handle and then pull this one up a little bit, move this down, and there we go. And see how my curve is open? I've got an, in, an open red square, and then that, that indicates the end of my curve, and then the beginning of my curve where I started is this little blue square. If I hit the close icon down here on the bottom, It'll close it up and you get a red icon surrounding a solid blue square and that is the close point of this curve. So I've closed that curve up. Um, now I'm going to deselect it and I'll or again remember the node was selected so I'll deselect again. I'll come up here to my palette, I'll select white and then select my pencil tool again and you'll notice down in the bottom that my fill is white and I'll just draw these speculars really quickly. Cool. I will close that curve by selecting the node tool, close it up. I'll select the other specular really quickly in the layer stack and I'll close that one too. Okay. A couple of little imperfections in there. Um, let's let's look at this one first this one's pretty flat here I will actually get rid of uh, this node here I'll just select that node and delete it and then while I've got this node selected I'll hit smart and it'll give me uh, this perfectly symmetrical uh, the handles will be symmetrical symmetrically aligned and then I will use two fingers or I'm sorry three fingers to perform a uh, what it does is if I hold three fingers down while I edit this, you see that? My three fingers are down. Oh, sorry, I've got to hold the handle first, then hold my three fingers on there. Everything that I do on, with this handle is mirrored oppositely on the other side, inversely. So if I pull out, it pulls out. If I move mine up, it moves its... If I move mine down, it moves uh, the other side up and vice versa. This is super useful and it will help you edit things rather quickly and get them nice and smooth. That little ovular shape is wonderful now. Um, I think this node's unnecessary. I'm going to delete it and I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. I'm going to hit smart. I'm going to grab one handle, use a mirror, pull it. That looks pretty nice. I'm going to move the node a little bit to where it's down here and then I will Deselect the node, deselect the object, and that looks great. It's nice and round. It's very pleasing to look at. I'll do this one too really quick. Select it in the layer stack. I'm going to get rid of this guy. I can't really see what I'm doing, so I'm going to decrease the opacity a little bit and see what I was trying to do originally. I had to decrease it quite a bit as this color is white. Select the node. I'll hit start, smart, grab the handle, hold three fingers down, edit it, let go, move things around. Again, you'll get rid of some nodes that you don't need that are kind of mucking up the works, so to speak. Moving the handles as you need to to sort of get the proper curves. And if you've been using Affinity Designer for a while, the chances are you probably already know this, but there are some people out there who are just getting started. I figured I'd throw this in there as part of the uh, tutorial. Cool. I like that shape a lot. Looks like we're good to go. I'll group this 
oops, sorry, group it by tapping the group and icon, and there you go. Oh, and I, I don't think I brought that all the way up, did I? No. Okay, nice. So there you go. And that was the inking process in a nutshell. Edited my curves, kept everything organized. All right, I'm going to delete mine. You don't have to delete yours. I just want to show you what it looks like when it's all finished. Let's go back and look at them when they're finished. Got everything in place. Got everything nice and organized. I got my face, my body outlines, my feet down here. You know, and you can get as micro or macro as you want. You can say uh, under the head feathers, uh, the beak, uh, under the eyes, you know, whatever you want to do, however you want to keep it organized, uh, go for it. Just remember that order of operations. Lay down a layer group, ink within it, clean things up. You can group things like um, here the face. Check it out. I just laid down a layer for the face and then I inked the whole face. But to make, you know, I went back when I was editing and I grouped things together and sort of organized them. These are the eyes, this is the beak, and these are the facial uh, feathers and features. I didn't even bother labeling them because now I know what they are. And, you know, just um, you make decisions uh, to keep things organized. It makes things a lot easier in the end. Okay, let's move on to the color. I think we're at about a half hour into this tutorial, and um, I'll put some notes in the description of the video so that you can fast forward and uh, skip right to the colors if you want to. Uh, I'll put some uh, links in the video description for that. Boom, the colors. Okay, so let's talk about them. I used the pencil tool for this exclusively. Um, there are a few other techniques that I'll show you that you can use, but yeah, this was a pencil tool job. Down here, um, when I laid down the layer, th let's get in. I'll turn everything off, and I'll, and I'll just take you through it step by step from the beginning uh, in a brief manner. This is the first thing I put down. I knew I wanted this blue. I found this blue, fell in love with this blue drew it with the pencil tool, as you can see there. I didn't even close the curve. Um, the way I did it was I just traced the contour of the bird with the pencil tool, and then I uh, started uh, editing the nodes. And actually, I'm just going to re reproduce that for you really quick. I'm going to lay down a vector layer here. I'm going to drag it down here so it's close to what I'm doing. I'm going to turn this original one off. I'm going to go to my swatches menu, select my pencil tool, select bird body blue, and then go for it. Boom. And then I just did our editing. You want to make sure that you pull all your nodes to where they're not, there's no um, spaces, uh, you know, it, between the black lines and the colors. And that's all part of getting that cartoon or comic book feel. You find the imperfections and you eliminate them. Or you enhance them. You don't necessarily have to eliminate perfections. Uh, I'm getting philosophical on you uh, as this video is running a little long. My mind is tending to wander a little bit, but you know, sometimes the imperfections are the things that make something perfect. Um, yeah, because isn't that subjective anyway? Okay, cool. And this didn't take me long at all, right? Cool, so that's, I would say that's like method one for laying down some flats. What I want to draw attention to, um, we'll call this lesson four, or lesson five, rather. Um, Look at all the nodes I have there. That's great, but it can get really annoying, like especially in areas like this. Uh, I, you know, if I really wanted to do a great job on that and really close up that little area there, I'd have to deal with all those nodes. That's annoying. There's another way to handle coloring. Uh, you can use the pen tool quite effectively for this principle or for this job. I'm going to turn that uh, off. I'm going to delete it, actually. I'm going to grab my pen tool. 
It works similarly to the pencil tool. My fill that I've selected is this blue color. What I'm going to do is, uh, I call this the tap around method. I'm going to deselect everything to make sure. Oh, sorry, one second. Grab my pen tool again. Okay, I'll tap around the contour of the object or the, uh, the drawing and uh, lay down a bunch of nodes. You'll see what happens. I'll start here underneath the little hair piece. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on and so forth. And I'll close it by tapping on the first node lastly. I, I think I deselected the color when I was fiddling with the brushes there, so I'll just go up go up here to my swatches menu, make sure that the fill uh, controller is selected, and then I'll hit bird body. And then again, look at the difference is I can edit it in the same way. I can go in and I can start pulling oh sorry. I can use the node tool and start pulling my curves where I need them to be. The advantage of this method is that if you have objects that are round or that have long, smooth contours, this makes editing extremely easy. You can just pull the curves out to match the contour and you don't have to do so much micro editing, right? Say you've got something that you need to be a little smoother, you can use your node tools down here to adjust the nodes to make them smooth or sharp or to break the curve or whatever you need to do to get this thing to fit where it needs to fit. Cool. Deselect. Notice how, notice, uh, I'm sorry, I'll select it. Notice how many, how, how much, many fewer um, nodes that I have. Uh, that makes things simpler. That makes things cleaner. Okay, so I repeated this process several times to fill out the body, the beak, and the feet. Um, oh yeah, and the tongue. And the little feather on the top. So there you go. I'll deselect really quick to keep it clean. Now we're going to talk about the effects and the cosmetic uh, changes that I made. Let's zoom into the beak. We'll concentrate on that for a little bit. You see I've done some cell shading here and also a highlight there on the beak. Let's talk about that highlight. That highlight is actually the same color as the beak, but the layer mode is screen. And that's uh, one of the early tricks I think a lot of... Uh, people who draw anime and stuff like that learn. I learned it in a YouTube video a year ago. Uh, and yeah, you can employ it as well. So just whenever you want to have something grouped together in a way that uh, you, can, you can actually... I drew it like this, right? I'm on my color layer. I drew the shape down really quickly with the pencil tool. And then when I had it, I just changed the layer mode to screen. And then I dragged it in there just to make it, just to neaten things up a little bit. Let's look at the tongue and under the beak. For the under beak, the color is actually a little bit darker. I took that original bur uh, beak and feet color and I darkened it just a little bit using the color wheel. Um, the next thing I did was I drew another shape with the pencil tool the same color as before. And of course, this time I used a multiply layer for that. And um, yeah, that can help you achieve a, uh, a darker effect. Now, there are all kinds of rules that painters will tell you about the colors of your shadows and things like that. Um, I don't know them by heart, but uh, generally I have, I seem to recall hearing many times in certain tutorials that, you know, if your colors are warm, make your shadows cool. And if your colors are cool, make your shadows warm. Uh, I don't fully understand this rule as I've not been to art school, but, um, 
uh, it does uh, seem tend to have an effect on uh, on the way the artwork turns out. My bird is a nice cool blue, of course, and the beak is yellow, but uh, I still try to employ that principle by making my uh, making my shadow uh, like a little bit grayish orange there. Um, it's not exactly a cool color. It's a it's a warm color, or it's actually sort of neutral, I guess. I'm not sure. I I need to go to art school. Um, <laughs> the stories I could tell you about that. Um, so here's my tongue. Uh, similar situation. Quickly drew the little shape out with the pencil tool. Selected my red here, the tongue red from the swatches, and for this one, I used a, a, a darker sort of purplish color. Um, and yeah, again, layer mode is multiply. But there's an extra little thing here. And I didn't, you know, I probably would have done this under the beak, but I just wasn't thinking of it. Um, it's a Gaussian blur. And I use this a lot. Um the radius is 0.2, and you're thinking, hey, that's nothing. But actually, look, if I take it to zero, it's quite something. That line is super sharp. It doesn't need to be. And in fact, I feel like when I zoom out, it doesn't really matter. But what if that tongue was huge? I would be looking at it like this. That sharp, sharp line right there, um, it bothers me a little bit. And I just feel like softening things up a little bit goes a long way sometimes and again I'm I uh, I may be totally wrong uh, that's just the way I do it um, uh, it's a silly thing to talk about uh, because the tongue is such a small little pe part of this piece um what else do we have oh my cheeks are there I don't want to forget those guys let's talk about the cheeks um, again same technique just employed a little differently. I drew the shape out with using my cheek blush color there with a pencil tool, okay? And then I applied a Gaussian blur. I'll turn it off for you. And there you go. I blurred this thing out. If you tap on the actual word Gaussian blur there, you can see I, 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 I blurred it out to 10.9 pixel radius. It's pretty extreme. And let's look at the layer mode on it. The layer mode is normal. Um, but you see there that as I blurred it out, it, it blends the, the blue underneath just a little bit. And uh, it creates a purplish sort of color. And it, it almost looks like I, I smudged it with like a smudge brush or something. Um, that's a, a way to achieve sort of a smudgy effect or, or a, a brushed, an airbrushed sort of smudgy media like you know it changes the effect it looks like a different media it doesn't look like this perfectly drawn vector shape um that's sort of a special effect that i used to achieve the cheeks so those are the cheeks what else do we got in here oh let's uh, go in and talk about these uh these uh cosmetic changes that i made to the body the belly it's white but look at it. It looks like a sort of a fluorescent blue sea greenish color there. or It's, it's approaching a sea green. Uh, if I tap on my ellipses to look at that, I used a soft light layer mode for that. I don't have all the uh, information about layer modes fully memorized. But what I can tell you is um, there are all kinds of resources online. Just search like how do layer modes work. And uh, there are tons of really great articles that these awesome artists have put together to help people to show you uh, what each layer mode does generally. And eventually, I'll probably have them memorized. Um, but um, yeah, play with them. Enjoy them. It's There's no harm or shame in using tools to achieve something. Uh, it's a means to an end. And uh, enjoy the use of your tools. Don't shy away from it. I don't even know what soft light is doing. We could probably look it up together, but I don't want to waste too much time. But all I know is that when I turned it on to soft light, this color was awesome. I really liked it, so I left it. The effects, Gaussian blur to about 
just to smooth it out a little bit and get a little bit of a gradient. It also has a sort of a gradient effect around the edges, which I really like. Next, the tail coloration. Here, I used a really bright color here because um, I was experimenting, but I didn't like the way it looked in its original form. So, of course, I changed the layer mode and I played around with it and I got a multiply. And let's take a look at that for a minute because I want to show you something. Um, select this. We'll go to the color wheel. So I used this fluorescent uh, purplish pink color. I, I wouldn't call it fluorescent. Sorry, that's, that's incorrect. But, and then the way it looks over here is sort of a, a, a deep purplish. It's approaching purple, the, deep, the deepness of the blue. And then the color of my bird is over here approaching green. It's like a sort of a very, it's almost approaching sea green or uh, it's not quite there yet. It, the color that I got from the multiply layer mode is almost exactly in between those two colors. So experiment and play with the, the, the layer modes. And uh, I think it's fun to do things like that. And maybe I'll do that on the channel just for fun for us. So we can have like a little, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, an exploration party. Uh, I'll do that uh, in a later video, I think. I'm still getting the hang of filming these things and finding the time to film them. But yeah, laid down my shape with a pencil tool, like that. Laid it down with that color. Didn't really like where that was going, so I uh, used the multiply layer. And then again, added some blur to get that gradient effect. And let's talk about the... Oh, that's okay. The head, the head highlight, the head highlight. What did I use for that one? I used screen. I used that bright green color. It brightened up the blue underneath a little bit. And um, it has a nice little gradient effect as if this, the sun is illuminating some iridescent quality in the feathers of this little imaginary bird. And, uh, oh, I forgot about this little guy. It's my little specular on the top again. Lots of Gaussian blur. That's just a white little shape that I drew with the pencil tool. And the layer mode set to normal because it's white. I just wanted it to be really shiny at that area. Then lastly, I'll talk about some of the shadows. Here's a little shadow I drew on the belly. I used a grayish, neutralish sort of purple for this uh, shadow. And uh, the layer mode was set to multiply and I went pretty extreme on the Gaussian blur there set it at 44.4 pixels um, again it's just a simple shape and that Gaussian blur can really help you break things up and create nice smudge or gradient effects uh, in your vector coloring threw these in at the end just to give the whole thing a little weight little occlusion shadow down there underneath the bird that I drew with the pencil tool really quickly. It's actually kind of a, it's kind of a crappy shape that I drew there, but uh, yeah. And then again, I drew another shape with the pencil tool with that same purple color that I used on the belly. If I select it, you can see that up here in the swatch menu. And I, uh, I, I think I, the layer mode might be multiplied, but I don't even know if that's necessary because the background's generally white. Um, I did that, and then, yeah, I uh, blurred it out a little bit, just a little bit, to where it doesn't look like this super crispy line in it. Yeah, and there you go. So that's my little birdie there. Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough. Um, I would love to see some of your little birds or any drawing that you do using any of these techniques, like tag me, uh, get me on Facebook or Reddit or uh, Instagram. Um, I'll pop in and check it out and give a comment and give some support to you, uh, just like you guys have been doing for me, because it's been really great. I'm really enjoying this, uh, and uh, I hope to keep it going. Guys, um, yeah, let, this is it. I'll just wrap it up at this. It, the, the video has already reached 50 minutes, which I told myself I wasn't going to do, but I did. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it, uh, and I hope it was time well spent for you. Um, 
Next month, I'll have a little sale going on. I'll have a couple new brush sets up uh, during November, and I'll have a sale going on until Thanksgiving. If you guys want to pick up some of my brush sets, there'll be some pretty awesome discounts going on. And anybody who has downloaded like some of my free stuff, like my prototype pencils, um, I'll send out an emailer and uh, give you guys some discount codes that you can use uh, to get even more savings when that goes down. Um, guys, be good. Stay positive, take care of yourself, take care of your family and friends, and uh, keep drawing and creating. Thank you so much for visiting my channel and taking the time to watch the video. We'll see you out there, guys. Cheers.